Hi, it's Maria, and I'm doing number 45 of Forgiveness to Love. And the titles uh, for tonight are We Learn Through Pain to Remember Our Lessons, and the quote, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And we all remember who said that, that was Jesus. And so when we showcase, why do we even need forgiveness? I mean, that's the, the $64,000 question, right? And so uh, we have motorcycles in the background. Anyway, um, on earth, here we are incarnated and um, we're really here to expand our soul and to take a good look at our life. And so because the energy we send out um, is surely the energy that comes back to us, right? And that's um, Sir Isaac Newton and his third law of uh, the karmic boomerang, right? And so um, it right now on earth, this is a very pivotal time in the evolution of humanity. And it behooves us to shut out the dark that's been festering and kind of destroying humanity, unbeknownst to most of us, right? And when I say the dark, uh, I'm not talking about the boogeyman. I'm not talking about ghosts. I'm not talking about things like that. Um, I'm talking about the opposite of light, right? And um, light is fun and laughter and ribbons and balloons, perhaps. Um, and the dark would be the negative emotions. It would be um, sadness and despair and anger and hatred and um, depression. And so it um, those emotions actually um, are subconscious, right? They're hidden in our subconscious and they can destroy everything that it, that it touches in our lives because everything is within its grasp because it is part of who we all are. And so, um, and so it has those long tentacles, right? That can practically reach anywhere and anyone and anything. And so, I know that it's um, a lot of people find this discomforting and it's much more fun to think about love and light and everything is rosy and look through rose colored glasses, right? Yet when we're cloaked with the darkness and we, there are so many people that are on this planet that are in that situation and they really are in a desperate state. And so um, we, we need to have compassion, right? At the same time, we need not lower our boundaries. And so right now it's the time for judgment and for justice and for truth. And it's the time to pay the piper. And we've re we really have kind of gone down the wrong path for way too long. And so now it's time to course correct. And so we take responsibility and we take accountability for our choices. And many of which have been really abysmal. We really, we really have not done a very good job sometimes with our choices. And because those choices have been less than what's in our highest good, there are consequences that we've all suffered. There are consequences that we, uh, that haven't been pretty. And um, so when, when we go down the road of there's sex and violence and lying and cheating and hurting others and stealing and, you know, the time is really running out. And as we look around, we're inundated with distractions that kind of want to pull us back down that road. And so there's pornography and pedophilia and violence and drugs and, you know, really some harsh crimes. And so many of us can't even imagine some of those things. And yet um, they really are around us and we can walk around like this, you know, saying, oh no, that, that doesn't touch us. And yet as long as we are in a body and we are on planet earth, yes, uh, we are affected by that. And um, we can't even imagine some of those people are doing some of those things because they all look very normal, or for the most part, they do. And um, it's hard for us to understand that some people have very dark souls. 
and very dark sides to themselves. And so the bottom line is, um, is that the dark wants to control you and control your money and through the, through that control your energy. And what happens then when we are controlled? We become enslaved and we lose our free will. We lose our power. We lose our dignity. We lose our uh, ability to choose wisely. And uh, something that I never even imagined ever, ever was that there are dark covens and there and people are doing rituals and sacrifice and dark magic and spells and um, things that will bind people. And, and if someone sees someone, they say, oh, I'm going to do a spell to attract that, that guy to me or whatever. And I'm going to do a spell on his, on him so that he leaves his wife or his partner or just crazy things. I don't know why people would think that they are so entitled to, um, to overtake another human being. And yet, uh, I think it has to be something where the other person agrees or perhaps that other person is just so um, entrenched in the whole thing. And and if that energy is just so powerful and that person is weak, then that person would succumb to some of that ridiculous um, um, behavior, right? And um, and some of those rituals. Anyway, this is not what we want to hear. It's not even what we want to think about. And it kind of takes the witch to a whole new level, right? And so you say, oh, Maria, that's not happening to us. I don't want to hear about it. Because that's just kind of otherworldly fiction stuff, right? And after all, you know, we're good people. And we live good lives. And uh, we're the good guys, right? We wear the white hats. And we want to win. Yes. And so there are sparklies and ice cream and popcorn and lollipops and ribbons and balloons where we are. Right. And so that's that is the goal. Yet we all must participate in our awakening. And so when we um, you can't sometimes actually when people leave our lives, we wonder and sometimes we we're saddened by it. And yet, sometimes uh, that's kind of how the universe works, which is um, our, um, our energy is such that we are no longer aligned with certain people. And so we leave those certain people behind because we want to be surrounded by like-minded, high vibrational people who, who um, are trustworthy and honest and loyal and good and fun and uh you know it's that is the goal right to live in a world of of unconditional love and trust and uh and all the fun stuff right and so the reality is that in this world right now boundaries have um all but been thrown away for some people and as have um manners and decorum, you know, and meaning what we say and saying what we mean. And um, that's kind of been uh, pretty much tossed out the window because people many times do not follow through, unfortunately. And um, I don't know, when I grew up, it was always please and thank you. And if I didn't say please or thank you, um, well, if I didn't say please, my mom would just kind of look at me <laughs> like, okay, I'm waiting, come on, you can do it. And so, and then thank you was, it's beautiful to say thank you and to show your appreciation and to say, I appreciate you and I appreciate um, what you do for me and I appreciate who you are and I'm grateful for all the wonderful things that I have in my life and I'm grateful for knowing you. And so when we, when we just are kind of overflowing with all this goodness and and all these positive emotions and these, um, um, you know, these, po this positive verbiage, this, these wonderful words that may seem trite. And yet, you know, they can either make or break a person's day, truly. If you see someone on the street, you never know how, um, how depressed they are or what kind of a morning they've had or if they've, 
awakened to hear some bad news or or hopefully good news. But if if you meet them with a smile and you express to them some compliment, you know, it can just change their whole life. And in effect, it really changes yours. So not only do you do it for someone else, but really you do it for yourself. And so um, uh, our world is such that um, at times it becomes such a disposable world, right? We, we don't necessarily care for things in terms of its longevity or think of things in terms of its longevity. We think, oh, it's here today and we'll toss it in the trash. And if we're lucky, we'll toss it in the recycling trash. But otherwise, you know, things don't really stick around for a very long time. If things are kind of made for the here and now, you don't think of things uh, in the olden days when people made furniture or whatever, you know, those were antiques now and they've withstood the test of time. But now you have so much furniture that, you know, you just kind of screw things in together and it'll last or it won't last, but but it'll do for now. And so uh, people have been like that too. You know, we don't really cherish our relationships as much as we could. And so when we think about how important people are, in our lives, it just changes the whole dynamic of um, of our communications with others. And so, you know, right now we've basically made a mockery of the family structure, right? And you see, and you see people just kind of going on their own ways. There isn't really that cohesiveness that there used to be, and um, and that's really um, that's our doing or our undoing um, in family court, we orphan children by destroying their parents. And then they see this going on and they see their parents that are suffering. And then they kind of feel like they have carte blanche to just go ahead and finish us off. And um, human beings have been so, um, I don't know, so selfish to just wallow in jealousy and envy and lies and gossip and thieving. And, you know, um, I don't know, for anyone who's been watching my videos, you know, I've shared a lot. Uh, and at times I think, well, gosh, my family is as sick as it can be. And yet, um, you know, I'm ashamed of it. I'm embarrassed um, about it. But there's really nothing I could do about it because everyone has their own free will and people have dark sides to them. And so when it comes to issues of finance, right, finances and uh, money, uh, people kind of show um, a side to them that we would have never imagined existed, right? Instead, if we had that money that they took from us, we would be sharing it in and rather than someone taking it and hoarding it and depriving others of it. I mean, it's just, it makes no sense at all. And so um, to clutch on to something so hard that um, ultimately I do believe that, that the universe uh, is a perfect universe and that if we are meant to have it, we, we will have it. And yet perhaps that was a lesson um, to know not to do that for ourselves, right? And to, to feel how that felt to be on the receiving end of it so that we aren't on the, the giving end of it. Anyway, we don't want really want to perpetrate that madness, that um, madness, excuse me. But, um, and I truly, for me, and again, I can give you by example, I'm sharing my story. I don't want to really talk in hypotheticals. It's easier if I tell you uh, some substantive facts so that then, um, then you can take that and try to uh, put it into your own lives and see what happens. <clears throat> anyway, I think I told you I met a man uh, at the Santa Monica Beach. <clears throat> and... Um, he um, had volunteered, I, I was being followed, <laughs> which you all know, followed and stalked and everything. And so he, um, I had met him through some friends and he said, you know what, I'll protect you because um, that's what I do. And um, I guess I had never met a mercenary, but I didn't even know what a mercenary really was. But anyway, um, 
so he was protecting me because we, he said, I see these people that are following you. And so he disappeared for a few days and I was really afraid <laughs> then because I thought, oh my gosh, the one person that said he's going to protect me now, all of a sudden he disappears. Oh my gosh. And so anyway, upon his return, he told me that he was with my sibling and that my sibling actually flew to Santa Monica from Florida and had stood on the beach wearing one of my white wigs from um, MariaHaiti.com and um, kind of came on to him and uh, invited him to her hotel for uh, dinner, I suppose. And so anyway, I think he stayed there for a few days and, um, and explained some things to me that I had no idea. And so, um, and so it was very weird because, um, a lot, I had a lot of answers through that and we were wondering, at first I was wondering, this is kind of going off on a tangent, but, um, the men that were, the men that were stalking me, we thought that it was Greyhound because of the bus door hitting my head and I was in litigation with Greyhound. And so when I called my attorney and I asked, I said, you know, would you do me a favor and call Greyhound and tell them to stop harassing me? And so he, he said, how do you know it's Greyhound? Are you sure it's not your sister? And so I thought, oh, how does he know that? So that kind of gave me more than, um, he answered more than the question I had asked him. But as it turned out, um, with this, uh, with this gentleman that I met, he told me that my sister claims that she's an event planner and she lives in Las Vegas and the events she plans are events to, um, uh, in regards to my demise. And so he said, she's on your phone and she's on your computer and she's on everywhere 24 seven. And I thought that's so weird and she's obsessed. And so I was truly shocked because I didn't know who it was. I knew that there was someone who was kind of the head honcho who was strategizing all of these, you know, coincidences, you know, when this car would come and when that car would come and when, you know, um, I'd get a call about this or, um, you know, my car would have an issue with it. I knew that there was somebody, you know, kind of pulling the strings on the marionettes on the len on the lemmings or the flying monkeys but i didn't know who it was and i really didn't think it was anybody in my family i i, I really didn't um and so anyway he said that he ended up flying to florida and met my children and that they're all living fat and happy i don't mean really fat but um fat and happy and they have condos in the same building and they're um you know that they have the choice of either being with their mother or being with their mother's money. And so I guess, uh, I guess it was a fairly easy choice for them. But um, it's really no wonder now when you think about it that Jesus had reached his threshold and he said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Because um, we need to cut through the BS that keeps people from knowing who they truly are. Because if we're just so focused on what we can take and how we can destroy and how we can become obsessed with other people and we strategize and and we and then that leads to what my ex had been involved in, which was, you know, um, embezzling and extorting and, and doing all kinds of things with money that I really just didn't want to know about and uh, and really didn't know then I found out years later a lot of things but yet when you're in a marriage um, until the divorce you know and then it seems like all kinds of things come out because people will just start telling you things that you had no idea and then you know um, the attorneys they find out all this stuff so his attorney would tell my attorney things and then you you're like oh I didn't know that and then it's like oh I didn't know that either and so um so yeah, we, we learn all kinds of things and that's kind of why we are put in certain situations because we can't go around with uh, closed eyes, right? We need to know what's going on. We need to be aware. And so as we think about all these things going on in the world and 
what goes on and we talked about this, you know, what um, things fall apart microscopically in our world. Well, think about it. I mean, things are falling apart macroscopically in across the globe, right? Not only in our country, but across the globe for sure. And so um, we have such a short time on this planet, really. It's, it's very finite. And so it's um, when you think about wasting a life, obsessed with money and obsessed with jealousy and envy and hurting someone and strategizing how you're going to get ahead and and trying to take things and and even manipulate finan financial accounts and things like that even with the embezzling and the the money laundering and things like that i mean it's just so ridiculous because um we really can become better and kinder and more trusting and wiser and more loving human beings, you know, rather than kind of transgress um, to sit in the sorrow and regret and have to repeat the lessons because, you know, we don't, we don't, nothing escapes us right and nothing escapes the universe and so we we are here to elevate we aren't here to sink we're go we're going up in a better direction right and if we aren't going in a better direction then chances are we're not going to be here we're uh, the universe if if we don't raise our vibration enough and if um we aren't able to stay here then we're either going to have re risen it so much elevated it so much that we're going someplace else to a different dimension and again no one's been there to come back to tell us exactly how that works but um we really are here in order to grow and expand our soul and be more loving and kind individuals and uh and not lose sight of what's really important because having a good life, living a good life is what's important. And so, you know, we've been in, what's that song? The House of the Rising Sun. Well, we've been in the House of the Falling Sun, I think. And so we're here to um, experience epiphanies of who we are and um, what we are here to do. And we, um, this is where the rubber meets the road, right? And so for decades and for lifetimes, we, uh, the dark loses its power and we gain our strength. And as we do that, then the, um, the audacity and the avarice and the arrogance and the, what else can I tell you? The um, selfishness and the delusions of grandeur and things like that, those just fall away. That's just... That's just extraneous fluff that we don't we don't need we don't want in our world, right? Because when we look in the mirror, what do we see? We see the face of God, and that is what we are. And so we are all divine. And when we can really appreciate that, then we need nothing else, really, because that is where the truth lies. And so. We don't need to live unconsciously anymore, destroying lives. What we need to do is kind of take hold of ourselves and say, look, enough. You know, it's not worth it. That's not what we're here to do. That's not the statement we want to make to the world. That's certainly not the statement we want to make to ourselves and to um, all those that we love. We want to show them our very best self. And uh, it's nothing that is superficial at all. It has to really come from within. One has to embody that love. One can't just all of a sudden, you know, it's like uh, Valentine's Day cards or, or, or um, a dozen roses or things like that. Those are all lovely things. And yet, you know, without the action, without knowing um, that it's so meaningful, to the person and to the to the giver and to the receiver, none of it means anything, right? And so when we focus on, just like forgiveness, when we focus on forgiving, on forgiving others, so that we can then forgive ourselves. And when we focus on ourselves, 
and forgive us, forgive ourselves, then we can forgive others. And then we can elevate to the loving, to unconditionally loving ourselves. And so that's how we actually heal. And so I'm grateful for you being here where the focus is to become better and better and better versions of ourselves. And so um, I'm, I'm really grateful and you're doing great. And remember, I love you and I'll see you on, this is number 40, did I say this was number 45? So I'll see you at 46. All right, good night.